Hey there! Uh, this is the town hall for this month, and I have the pleasure of being here with Thibaut. Hello! What do you do at Omiseka, Thibaut? I'm taking care of the Iwale team. That sounds like a responsibility. Yes, a lot of responsibilities. How do you feel about that? Is it weighing heavy on your shoulders? No, it's pretty great actually. Everyone is great at Omiseka, so it's, it's easy. Now that we bring up the wallet, how, how's that going? It's going pretty well actually, because uh, as everyone knows already, I hope, we've just released uh, version 1.0.030. Wow. That's pretty, super exciting. Yeah, it's super exciting. What, what can I do with it? How do I try it? Well, it's still pretty much a closed loop wallet, e wallet, but you can actually do a lot of things with it. The features we actually added recently in the past quarter are the ability to exchange. Mm -hmm. So you can actually trade from one token to another token. Mm -hmm. But it's all still inside the wallet. Okay. We've also finalized the transaction request and consumption system. Mm -hmm. So you know what you used to when you create a QR code, scan it, exchange money with your friends. Mm -hmm. Well, you can actually now do it in the e wallet as well. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I think it's, it's going to be the main way for people to actually exchange money because it's so easy to use. It's easy as. Yeah. You just create a QR code and scan it. But we've also redesigned the whole admin panel. And I hope you guys have seen it on Reddit already because we shared a nice little demo of it. Have you watched it? I did watch it. I was lucky, lucky enough to be here yesterday. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I witnessed it live. History in the making. Very cool. And uh, we've also started writing end-to-end -end tests. So why are we doing that? We want the wallet to be able to be run on any OS, basically, and to be sure that it actually works fine, right? Because you put it on Windows, you put it on Linux. How do you know it actually works, right? Because we already bundled it as a binary. Ah. So, you know, it might just break. Do we have to retest everything manually? It seems like a pain, right? That does sound like a pain. So instead, we just wrote E2E tests. Those are independent from the application. One, once we put that bundle on any OS, we can just run those tests next to it. And it's going to make sure that the new wallet works fine on that platform. So those E2E tests test the entire app? Yes, and the functionality. Yes. It's like acceptance test slash integration test wow. using robot framework, which is the Python framework. Very impressive. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So yeah, we finally released 1.0.0, which is the first actual stable release of the e-wallet. So you and everyone else can actually start using it right now. We are not going to break things anymore for now. We might wait in future versions when we start playing with the blockchain and do this kind of thing, but. It's still going to be stable anyway. Mm -hmm. We also started doing weekly updates. I, I don't know if you've seen it. I like, have. Yeah, every week we're doing yeah. a small short update. Actually, the whole e-wallet team takes part in it. We just have a share Google Doc. You know, everyone can write what they did. We put a PR that we worked on. So we're going to start doing that probably every week. It's like one. Yeah, it's coming. Every Friday. It's coming soon. Every Friday or Saturday. Yes next Friday. And the next big step for us is actually doing a lot of writing and design. Because before we actually start implementing the blockchain mm -hmm. integration, right, we have to design it. Mm -hmm. Like, how is it going to work exactly? And we need to talk with you, the blockchain team, and a lot of other smart people to be sure that it's actually going to work. Yeah. To do that, we're going to use the Homisego Improvement Proposal System. So those are shortcuts to OIPs. And we are going to be writing one for first the private contracts, which is direct communication between your wallets. It's a layer on top of the blockchain, so we still have interoperability before the blockchain is even connected. Okay. And what do those private contracts? What can they? What can I? What can they do? So they are basically two e wallets agreeing to talk to each other. Okay. So you can have transactions from one to the other. Okay. Without going to the blockchain, only through HTTP for now. The next right piece we're going to be working on are uh, blockchain key management and user identity. Yeah. So that's going to be a big one because yes. we need very, very high security. Yes. And yeah. Who so, hasn't lost a private key? Yeah. By the way, all the OIPs are going to be completely public, so we welcome any feedback from the community. And another right piece we have to work on is the cash in cash out feature, mm -hmm. which is going to be pretty important in the UI wallet as well. Okay. Yeah. And I guess that's it for the little update for the e-wallet. Yeah. So maybe we can answer some questions yeah, the community. Yeah, let's ads. do it. Uh, so, 
How hard will it be for payment uh, and exchange companies to integrate with the eWallet? Will, will it be as simple as plugging in a power cord? Or I wouldn't say it would be as easy as that. But I would still say pretty simple. If you have coding experience, yeah. it should be all right. We have one of our clients who took actually less than a day, uh -huh. less than a day, sorry, to integrate the SDK. Wow! Yeah, so it's pretty smooth and, and fast. That sounds like a frictionless integration. Yeah. I would call it that. And what do you see as the first use case for the e-wallet? What types of businesses uh, do you think it can help most, or are you hoping uh, it will be used for first? Well, right now, I think any business that needs a loyalty system can start using it right away. It's the best use case currently. And once we actually plug on the blockchain, right, you can actually turn all those loyalty points to tokens on the blockchain, right, in one click. Wow. Yeah. So, so loyalty points now, tokens coming soon. Yeah. And probably fiat later. Wow. Fiat to crypto. What everyone's talked about. Yeah. In the whole world. Clearly. Anyway, uh, lastly, how's the feedback going? Uh, it's pretty good. So as I told you, right, we had a um, client implementing the, the SDK already, yes. right, and it took them less than a day to do it. Mm -hmm. So they told us it's like pretty easy to use, especially with the SDKs that we built for the server and the clients. Mm -hmm. uh, other than that, we had a bit of feedback about the documentation once again. Yes. So we improved it a lot since the beta release a few months ago, right? Mm -hmm. But the, the latest concern people have is about the path that you take in the getting started part. Mm -hmm. Because we offer like ways to set up with Docker, ways to set up with background, ways to set up uh, locally, just from scratch, right? And people are not sure which way to take is the best. Mm -hmm. So we're planning to refactor that and offer them like a recommended way mm -hmm. and then offer alternatives like if like you have specific needs. You know? Yeah, that's awesome. Very cool. Uh, on the blockchain uh, slash plasma side of things, things are speeding along. Uh, our blockchain team in Poland uh, doesn't sleep, so that is very helpful for our efficiency. And uh, the biggest update since the last town hall meeting is that uh, so previously, uh, initially we had the plasma with confirmations. Then we had Plasma with no confirmations, but with certain other constraints. And uh, Kelvin, uh, along with some other people, uh, have come up with a way to do Plasma without confirmations, uh, without the pre prior restrictions. So that's very exciting. And right now we're testing and look, uh, we're kind of carving out and analyzing the viability of taking that to production. So yeah, it's super exciting. Things are chugging along. And yeah, life's good on our side, on the blockchain side of things. Maybe I can ask you a few questions the community has about Plasma. I would I would yeah. I would love it. Okay. Thank so you. Could you discuss with me the speed of finality finality using Plasma? Yes, yes, I definitely can. Uh, so finality uh, the finality that we're usually thinking about is based off of Ethereum, and that is basically the certainty that uh, once a transaction has uh, reached this point in time, reached this state, that it will be irreversible, mm -hmm. that you have certainty with regards to its inclusion in uh, the blockchain. And so, in terms of finality for what we're working on, for uh, you kind of have some certainty initially once your transaction is submitted to a Plasma child chain. Mm -hmm. uh, but then once that child chain, once that block root is submitted to Ethereum, uh, that's when you have uh, Ethereum-based finality, which uh, is stronger just because the economic incentives surrounding it. Uh, yeah, there's a lot more uh, behind it. Okay, so. If I want to show a transaction happening on Plasma in the wallet, yes. should I wait for the finality on Ethereum to actually say that's final, call it that's final? In the e-wallet, what I would do is I would basically show it at each step, uh, each stage. Yeah, we'll have to so, yeah, translate uh, it. Yeah, so 
a lot of the times with proof of work chains, when you make a transaction, you can actually see how many uh, confirmations yes. have occurred if we're talking about a proof of work chain. Mm -hmm. And then as the number of confirmations uh, go up, uh, you're, you have increased certainty with regards to the transaction's inclusion. And so I would do a similar thing with this, where as soon as it's uh, included in the child chain, you can say that. And then as soon as it's included in Ethereum, uh, I would say that as well. And then finally, uh, up until when Ethereum switches to proof of stake, as long as it's still proof of work, I would even go so far as to show confirmations on Ethereum. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Oh, we're going to talk about something I, I like to ask you about. Exits. Exits? Yes. People, Hello. why would they ever leave Plasma? <laughs> why, you know, plasma things going to happen. You never know, right? So, so how so. long are exit expected to take? Stay here. So, in the uh, in the initial architecture and the one we're building off right now, exits are expected to take a maximum of uh, fourteen days. But recently, we've been working on a fast withdrawal design. Mm -hmm. So, essentially, what we what that entails is uh, users are essentially able to get something on Ethereum that represents their exit and then they are able to trade that with people. So essentially someone else, uh, anyone can wait the exit time and provide liquidity for the people who are exiting and who need, uh, need value right away okay. to play with. So I'm just going to ask you another question that yeah. you just asked me actually. Why would someone exit? Why would someone exit? Well, there are, there are a few reasons that someone could exit. Uh, one is if they're being censored. So if the child chain consensus essentially stops accepting their transactions, uh, then uh, it's no longer working for them. And so they should exit to Ethereum and either stay on Ethereum or join a plasma chain that is willing to uh, essentially include their transactions. Uh, another reason uh, is if the child chain uh, does accept transactions, but they only accept them uh, with very high fees mm -hmm. because we expect uh, essentially different plasma chains to have different fees, uh, different levels of security. So if the one you're on now isn't working for you, you should you can switch. And then also if the child chain uh, consensus mechanism becomes malicious. So if they keep submitting blocks to Ethereum, but if they withhold the block data, then no one can tell whether the child chain is valid or not. And so in that case, you should exit. Or if the child chain consensus mechanism shows everyone the child chain, but has created and included an invalid block. And so essentially, people should exit if they either don't like how the child chain is behaving, or if the child chain is misbehaving. Thank you. You're welcome. Very good. Very clear explanation. I am to please. And uh, these days, which type of plasma are you actually working on? Because that seem, there seems to be so many. So, uh, what's currently being worked on in production is uh, the plasma plasma MVP uh, architecture, and we're kind of pushing the process of like pushing past that right now. And then uh, the majority of research now is kind of going into extensibility. So as I mentioned before, more viable plasma is an improvement upon plasma MVP. So uh, there's a lot of focus in on that. Focus on that. We're looking into mass withdrawals. So essentially, further reducing the gas on Ethereum and the cost uh, of exiting by allowing multiple people to exit with one exit multiple UTXOs with one Ethereum transaction. Yeah. Okay, I think that's, that's it for the questions, right? We covered it? Yeah. Wow. I think, I think we did a pretty good job, right? That wasn't, too, let us know. That wasn't too bad at all. Uh, okay. It was pretty good. Yeah, awesome. Is there any final words you'd like to say about Plasma or...? It's coming soon. So it's 1.0.0. Hi, my name is Kasima and I am the Director of Engineering for Plasma here at Omaze Go. I thought I'd let you know a little bit about myself. I've been working as, as a software engineer for over 20 years now, primarily helping startups deliver software to production. 
My interest in blockchain started when I was working at GitHub on the billing and payments team. One of the first projects I had there was to help with a user study to figure out why we weren't getting enough private repository adoption in certain parts of the world. One of the results that came out of the study was that people couldn't pay for our private repository plans. They literally, they could afford it, but they literally couldn't pay for it because we were only taking credit cards at that time. That led us down to investigate alternative payment methods and very seriously consider accepting Bitcoin at GitHub. While that didn't go through, the research stuck with me, mainly from a financial inclusion perspective. I learned about Omizego last summer when I saw that Vitalik was meeting with the Central Bank of Thailand. Now, I'm Thai, so that was really interesting to me. And as I investigated why he was there, it led me to this company. The more I learned about Omizego, the more the mission connected me with my previous work and really resonated with me. I was sold. I really wanted to be part of this project. So here I am today. My primary responsibility here is to connect our research work to our production engineering efforts. And really my goal here is to ship the Omizigo network in a timely and responsible manner. Thanks.